Welcome back to the YouTube Crypto channel, the channel where you learn about crypto to make better crypto investments. Today we are going to answer the question, should you invest in Bitcoin miners or Bitcoin? But before answering that question, what is Bitcoin mining? Well, Bitcoin mining is using computing power to secure the Bitcoin network and earn Bitcoin. So you basically let your computer solve mathematical problems to earn Bitcoin. But there is a famous event called halving, which will divide the returns of Bitcoin mining. So the question is, should you invest now before the halving divides returns? Alright, so you let your computer run to solve a block. And I will explain more in detail what a block is in a few minutes. But when you manage to solve a block, you earn Bitcoin. As of today, you earn 3.125 Bitcoin, which roughly equals $350,000 at today's price. But every 210,000 blocks, Bitcoin rewards are divided by two. So if you're mining Bitcoin, you should expect your revenue to be halved every four years and so since it's been two years since the last halving in two years you will earn 1.56 bitcoin instead of 3.125 so is there an opportunity to take or not and to share with you my experience on the subject i decided not to mine bitcoin because it simply did not suit my situation but it might suit yours and this is why i made this video after this video, you will know if Bitcoin mining is for you or not. But as the famous investor Charlie Munger said, if you can't explain why you are making the investment, don't do it. So we are going to try to understand Bitcoin mining. How does Bitcoin mining really work? Well, the goal of Bitcoin mining is to secure the Bitcoin network. And here comes the very well-known blockchain. Each block is a link of the chain, which ensures that Bitcoin do not get compromised. So because Bitcoin is basically a transaction ledger, each block contains a bundle of transactions people made, plus some additional data to make sure that it is secured. For example, the previous block's data. Because Bitcoin's consensus mechanism is proof of work, well, we have to find a proof that we put enough effort to secure the network. When you can buy the block data plus a random number, miners put it in the cryptographic function SHA-256, they try to find a key. But let's frame it in another way so we can understand it better. So Bitcoin mining is essentially trying to find an ounce. A ounce is a number that, when input it in the cryptographic function SHA-256, returns a hash. A hash is a long number made of zeros and ones. And that number is the key. For the key to be valid, that number has to start with a certain amount of zeros. And that certain amount of zeros depends on the network's difficulty. The difficulty varies based on the amount of miners trying to find the key at the same time. And because the key is dependent on the nouns, miners do not have another choice than to guess and check the nouns. That guessing and checking done by computer is the work. And the proof of work is when you find a nouns that gives a valid hash. When you found the proof of work, you can add a block to the blockchain. And earn a reward. As of now, the reward is 3.125 Bitcoin. So miners compete to find a valid key. But here is the problem. All miners compete for the same block at the same time. And the first miner to find the key gets the reward. So the higher your computing power, the more chances you have of getting a reward. But how to increase your chances of getting a reward? Well, to increase your chances, you need higher computing power. And you can increase your computing power by increasing the amount of computers you have. Or increasing the efficiency of your computers. Either way, this will incur increased costs, so ultimately this will turn into an investment. This is the fixed cost, buying the miners. But once you have the miners, running them also costs money. And that's where variable costs come. You have to pay for electricity, everything that is linked to hosting, and maintenance. But with all that, is Bitcoin mining profitable? Well, for Bitcoin mining to be profitable, you need your fixed costs plus your variable costs to be inferior to the reward. But that's assuming you get a reward, which is unlikely. Because you're competing with other miners and the reward can only go to one person, well, you are unlikely to have a reward even if you have a high computing power. And this is where you integrate a mining pool. Instead of mining Bitcoin alone, you will mine Bitcoin with other people. And when your group gets a reward, you divide the revenue. So let's take an example. Here we have four blocks and so four rewards. We have a solo miner with a low hash rate. And we have exactly the same computer, but multiple gathered within the same pool. So even though the solo miner has the same computer as the pool, it will have a low computing power compared to the pool because the pool combines all the computing power of each miner. And so the pool effectively becomes one miner with a high hash rate, which has a way higher chance at getting a reward. So all the rewards would go to the pool and no reward would go to the solo miner. Now it could happen that a solo miner gets a reward once in a while, but 
this is going to be rare. And now that the mining pool earned Bitcoin, the rewards will be split amongst miners in the pool based on contribution. So if you deliver a high competing power in the pool, you will get a bigger share of the reward than if you had a small part of the competing power of the pool. Alright, so this is good in paper, but how profitable can it be? Let's run a profitability test. But before that, the goal of my channel is to increase your crypto gains. I spend hours studying the crypto industry so I can make content for you to make better investment decisions. So if you want me to continue to make content for you consider subscribing it helps me a lot all right the actual numbers so let's imagine a bitcoin price of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. the current block reward which is 3.125 bitcoin the blocks mined per day which is 144 the network hash rate would be 1 billion 168 million 200 thousand their hash per second their hash per second being the metric for computing power now you may want to join a mining pool to ensure that you get rewards but this service is not always free so here there is a pool fee of two percent let's imagine your machines run 97 percent of the time and your electricity price is five cents per kilowatt per hour the bitcoin miner we are going to use in our example is the a miner s19k pro which roughly costs 1500 dollars now one thing you should know is that the price of bitcoin miners fluctuates but more on that later. That miners run 120 terahash per second and delivers 2.76 kilowatt. All right, a bit of math now. To get the amount of Bitcoin our miner would get per day, we have to find our miner's weight in the network. And to do that, we divide the computing power of our miner by the network's total computing power. To that, we will multiply the number of block per day times the block rewards. Then we will account for the pool fee and the uptime. And after all these calculations, with this miner, we get 0.000. 44 bitcoin per day so that's the bitcoin we get but now we are going to see the actual revenue we get and this is fairly simple to get the revenue per day we're gonna get the bitcoin per day and multiply it by the bitcoin price and this gives us 5.28 dollars per day but you do not actually make 5.28 dollars per day as you have to pay for electricity so we have to calculate the electricity price per day and to do so we have to multiply the kilowatt of our miner by 24 because there are 24 hours in a day then we multiply that by the electricity price and then account for the uptime and after the calculations we get an electricity price of 3.21 dollars per day now to get our actual revenue so our grace revenue per day we have to deduct the electricity cost to our revenue and so this leaves us with 2.07 dollars per day profit all right but you paid for the machine so at the start your operations will only serve to pay back your machine and by dividing the price of the machine by the profit we make per day we get the amount of days it would require to pay back for the machine with our operations so we would need 724 days which is almost two years to break even and that is excluding any additional cost but we'll talk about the additional cost in a minute one thing you absolutely need to know is that over time your profitability will decrease and that is for two reasons the first one is that the difficulty is increasing on the chart you can see the computing power increasing over time and that is due to more miners joining the network but as more miners join the network your share of the network decreases and so you effectively get diluted meaning with the same machine it will be harder to mine bitcoin and so your revenue will drop and the second reason your profitability might decrease over time is that machines get outdated and there are two ways for machines to get outdated first one is the physical lifespan obviously as machines get older their components tend to be less efficient and as they become less efficient your competing power decreases but your electricity cost stays the same so you will make less and less profit all right so in good condition you can expect a machine to last five to seven years but in bad condition it can drop as low as one to two years and side note computers that are specifically designed to mine bitcoin are called asic miners all right the second reason machines get outdated is because of their economic lifespan as time goes on and technology advances new machines are created new machines more efficient they enter the market and so beat your old machine increasing the difficulty of the network and pushing you out of the market and it depends on your machine but on average the economic lifespan of a miner is three years all right that was making money with operations but what about the bitcoin miners you bought can it increase in value or 
does it just drop? Alright, this is a tricky question. Miners' price do fluctuate, but the general trend is that their value depreciates over time. Obviously, because miners lose their competitive advantage over time, well, people are going to be less willing to pay more for something that does not get the return it used to. So that's for the tech side. But miners are not just computers. Miners are symbols of potential returns. And so miners' price is correlated to Bitcoin's price, as you can see on the graph on the screen. In orange, we have the Bitcoin price, and in blue, we have the ASIC price. So how to improve profitability? Well, the major factor is going to be electricity price. As electricity price decreases, your profitability will increase. And this is why in countries like Germany, where electricity is 40 cents, Bitcoin mining is unprofitable. But in countries like Iran, where electricity is much cheaper, it can actually be profitable. And so Bitcoin mining is a race for cheap electricity. All right, but back to today's main question. Should you invest in Bitcoin or Bitcoin mining? Well, let's run a test to see that. So the first strategy we are going to use is BTC holding. So we are going to buy Bitcoin at a certain date and never touch it. So we have $20,000 to invest and in January 1st, 2024, the Bitcoin price was $43,000, which gives us 0 0.456 Bitcoin. In October 1st, 2025, the Bitcoin price rose to $180,000. So our $20,000 investment turned into $54,000. Now, let's compare with Bitcoin mining. The strategy here is going to be Buying miners with the $20,000, sell some of the Bitcoin to cover the electricity cost, and stack the rest of the Bitcoin. So starting in January 1st, 2024, with $20,000, we buy 1,333 terahash. Our electricity price is 5 cents per kilowatt per hour. We have an average uptime of 97% and a pool fee of 2%. Note that I use those numbers because they are very common in the space. So in October 1st, 2025, with this setup, we would have mined 0.61 Bitcoin. We would have sold 0.29 Bitcoin and we would have kept 0.32 Bitcoin. Now, our hardware resale is $26,000. It is effectively higher than what we bought it for. And that is because as Bitcoin price rose, the expected returns of those miners rose as well. And so logically, if the miners can generate more revenue, well, their price is going to increase as well. And when we add the, the Bitcoin value we have plus the hardware we have, we get $64,000. So with this example, we would have made more money by mining Bitcoin. But Bitcoin mining is not all bright. And so now we are going to see the pros and cons of Bitcoin mining. Let's start with the pros. First off, you can accumulate Bitcoin below the market price. Because you get Bitcoin from mining, you don't have to have it at market price. The Bitcoin you will get is at production value, which is lower than the market price. Secondly, you turn cheap electricity into money. So if you have access to cheap electricity, this is a great way to leverage it. Bitcoin mining is a productive investment, unlike Bitcoin which is sitting in your wallet. And so Bitcoin mining is a real business, but it means you can more or less calculate the returns you will have. Now, Bitcoin mining can be more tax efficient. Because mining Bitcoin is basically running a business, in most jurisdictions, electricity costs, because they are operating costs, can be deductible. And so that's a way to put more money in your pocket. Now, what are the downsides of Bitcoin mining? Well, first of all, there is high operational costs. As we saw, it with the cost of electricity. Another downside is that miners depreciate fast. Technology advances fast, and so you might be pushed out the market before you predict it to be. Bitcoin mining has complex logistics. You have a whole bunch of calculations to make, and you have to manage all the operations. Now, one of the biggest downside is that having events divide your profits by half. And so every four years, one day to another, you will have the same cost of electricity, but your revenue will be divided by two. So you have to calculate in advance not to fall short in revenue to pay your operating costs. And obviously, there is maintenance and failure risk. It can happen that your miner breaks, and so you have to repair it, which obviously has a cost. And a break-even point of two years can turn into three to four years. Alright, what is an actionable takeaway you can take from this video? Well, I am going to tell you what you should look for when deciding whether you're mining or not. But if you're still here, manifest yourself and type miner in the comments. That way, I can know who watches my video and who doesn't. Who knows, I might make some gifts someday. Alright, the first thing you should look at is the electricity cost. If your electricity cost is higher than 10 cents per kilowatt per hour, you are likely going to be unprofitable. The second thing you should look at is machine efficiency and the timing. You absolutely want to buy 
newer generation miners. The third thing you should look at is the Bitcoin price and the difficulty. Ideally, you would prefer to mine Bitcoin when the total hash rate is low, and you would also prefer to buy miners during bear markets, because when Bitcoin is going down, the price of miners is going down even more, and so you might make a bargain. Fourth thing you should look at is your operational capability, because if you want to mine Bitcoin, you need physical space, you need stable power, and you need proper cooling. Because remember that every time you have a downtime, you make zero dollars in revenue. Fifth thing you should look at is your investment objective, because if you just want dollars and sell 100% of your Bitcoin when you get them, you're likely not going to outperform Bitcoin. So if you want to outperform holding Bitcoin, you need to hold the Bitcoin you mine after your electricity costs, as we laid down on the example earlier. On my channel, you learn about crypto to increase your crypto gains. So if you better understand the Bitcoin mining industry now, subscribe to my channel. This is why I make those videos. And if you want to learn more, you can watch my last video where I discuss whether DCA, value averaging or lump sum investing is a better investment strategy. I will see you there.